Well, welcome to Technology and Education. Today, I'm Richard Smith. And I'm Caroline Crawford. And today, we're talking about how to structure an online course for success. It's actually rather difficult not considering all the different entities that go into creating a strong online course. But for people who have been creating online courses for a while, it, it's kind of a duh. <laughs> and duh means it's kind of an obvious. After you've gone through all the things you really shouldn't do, you end up with the things that, well, yes, of course you're supposed to do these things. Well, I don't know. I've seen a lot of online courses taught by people for years, and uh, they aren't particularly good. I, I guess I really shouldn't say that. but uh, Especially since he's taught many of mine. <laughs> Hmm. Oh, here, yours, yours. <laughs> yeah, cover now. Come on. <laughs> yours, yours are fine. Hmm. <laughs> I saw that. So, one of the things that one would suggest is necessary and appropriate, I think, is to offer a nice outline structure, something that's usable, very easy to locate information. What would you suggest? Yeah, I think so. I mean, the course should have a structure. And, uh, of course, I'm kind of a minimalist when it comes to online courses, but I note that... Well, yours are created beautifully. His yeah. are very delineated, right, very thank behavioral you. and procedural, I which note is that, gorgeous. I um, note that uh, many people starting out with their first online course put everything into the course but the kitchen sink. Yes. So it becomes complicated. But there are a few guidelines for your online course that I think should always be present no matter what is in the content area, in the ah. methods area. So you always want to have an introduction to the course which lets the students know about the uh, topic of the course and the purpose of the course. Working under the assumption that people actually read that. Well, My first page is all about that and then it has an outline of the course underneath that hmm. people don't necessarily get to because you have to scroll down a little. Well, I can't help what the students are going to Thank do you. or... <laughs> <laughs> Or and not my fault. <laughs> or not to do, but but that's if you have a, an online course and let the students know in in one place which says course introduction or something similar to that, uh, the, how the course is designed. Mm -hmm. uh, if, let them know if there are homework assignments that you know that, uh, that where to there are locate readings the information and where to locate the information. Where is the actual mm -hmm. assignment located? Where is the assessment for that assignment located? If it's a quiz, where would you go in order to take the quiz? As well as how do you submit the assignment? Mm -hmm. Each of the assignments may be submitted differently. And well, what I would do is I would have a consistent place for the assignments to be uh, to be submitted. Now, in a, well, we use Blackboard. Uh, Blackboard has what you call a course menu along the side, and I always have uh, one link there that goes for the to all the assignments for the entire semester. There's another link that goes to all the tests that are available uh, or that must be taken for the entire semester. It is semester. wonderful in your course. You do so that. So yes. that within each individual class, there's nothing in there that says take the test now. It says you are, are responsible for taking a test look at the course menu and you'll right. see the schedule. So you're schedule. not surprised you don't have to go track it down. But right. I have been in courses where you do have to go track it down. And the students are very, con I'm very confused, and the students are very confused by that. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you shouldn't have to track anything uh, down for your course. Also, well, even when it's, when it's in a unit of instruction and everything is in there that you need, trying to figure out exactly what link to hit in order to access that information, it's not always easy. Yeah, frequently uh, pr uh, teachers of online courses uh, put access to a p important parts of the course, such as the tests or the assignments, in strange places. Yeah, it's in strange places. But I say keep it all up front. Keep it on the course menu. That's, that's my method. It works. Also, you want to have that, <laughs> that syllabus up there on your course menu so your students can access that and see that Momentarily, it's there. Momentarily, yes. Um, for the... Uh, uh, for them to be able to uh, know the course dates and what's what their responsibilities are, and so typically, you know, of course, syllabus on an, with an online course contains the same types of things that a course syllabus Should. for a face-to-face -face course. Uh, uh, should. Contains yes. Doesn't always, but it should. It should. Well, that's what we uh, the the it's the sh the shoulds that we're talking about <laughs> that we're talking about uh, about now, and also you might want to have a bio for yourself as the instructor so that the students have an idea of who you are in, in relation to the university and what you do, what maybe what you're, or in the high school, what your interests are. As well as socialization for the students to get to know a little bit about each mm -hmm. other, introducing themselves to each other, the ways to socialize 
not only at the very beginning of the course, which is so important in gauge, but also at points throughout the rest of the course. Well, that would be people a, want to you communicate. Put, you put that into your uh, uh, discussion links. Discussion number one, if you'd like, could be a discussion on the, the backgrounds of the uh, students so they can get to know each other. And then you can get into the uh, content type discussions. And that get to, getting to know you discussion provides a practice session for all the students uh, who are taking an online course for the, uh, for the first time. So that can be qu uh, quite effective. And what do you think about ease of access to the instructor? How would you obtain access to the instructor? Well, access to the instructor would should be through the through the course, and you can access the instructor uh, via email, course email, or you can access the instructor uh, via uh, via in course in, email in, in, in course email in the, by, via the um, uh, via discussions. You'll have access to the uh, instructor via uh, discussions. And when I it's a good point you said about in course email, because some course management systems will allow students Send external to, they use external mail uh, as the mail function for the course. Even when you communicate, do not use this. <laughs> I only check in course in a right. timely fashion. So if you're Yet using... I always get emails outside in another email yeah. environment. It's like, okay, it, it took me several days to get to you because yeah. I couldn't find you. I didn't know that you would be communicating with me <laughs> within yeah. this email environment. Right, and the other part about using... Uh, uh, ex After I explicitly assistant. requested you not. <laughs> yeah. Another part about using uh, a, a course management system that uses a student's own personal email addresses, frequently they have, the, you know, everybody, every each email system has its own spam filter, and messages from the course may be interpreted as spam by that spam filter, and may, may, they may not ever get those messages. So if you have an email, if an op, you have an option to use either uh, the student's private email, as you know, which is actually regular email, or the in the in course management email system. I would always opt for the in course management email system because you know it's going to get there. Well, and you know, there's also documentation of what's occurred within the course mm -hmm. as well. Um, another thing that I find interesting is I can't stand the guess what I'm thinking and guess what I want type situations where you don't clearly inform the learner of what the assignment is, much less how the assignment is going to be evaluated, what the final grade is based upon. That that always drove me crazy going through school. Yes. Like, I, tell I, me. Just tell me. I don't want to guess. Just tell me. In an online course, I think it's particularly important mm. to be very explicit with your assignments. Don't try to make the students guess what is on your mind or go for those higher level thinking skills when you're giving the assignments. Unless you're going to evaluate it and you tell them exactly how you're going to evaluate. Mm -hmm. Well, what happens is if this, if, if, if tell the me students, what you want. if the students don't understand what you want and what you're talking about, it's going to produce emails for you and then you're going to wind up having to repeat yourself in a variety of emails for the questions that they have. So the more explicit you are in an online course, the better off you are as, as a teacher. In a face-to-face -face course, if your directions uh, need additional explanation, the students can ask you instantly in class in, in the course. If you're online, it produces anxiety on the part of the students and it produces extra work on your part because as you have well to respond to their anxiety questions. anxiety on the part of someone else if they, if someone else is taking over and instructing your course. I hate that, <laughs> taking over someone else's courses and not under, as the instructor, not understanding what the assignment is mm -hmm. and having to well, make up, well, I think this is what's being said, so let me revamp it into this and enhance the mm -hmm. assessment so I understand what I'm supposed to do. Yes, you can always spot a well-designed course if you, if it's somebody else's course, if you are assigned to teach a course that somebody else has designed and you can't understand what's going on, you know that there's a problem in the design it of happens. that course. It, 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 it's, I know it's happened to you. It certainly has happened to me on uh, several occasions. And it's usually courses that um, uh, involve the students searching through a great deal of information or directions that are not very specific. So not only the don't the students understand it? You, as a newly assigned teacher to that course, also can't well, understand it. Well, there's a vast amount of information, like in my course, there's a vast amount of information, and you can't find the assignment information, which is an issue. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, on the other hand, there's not enough information offered in order to even understand what the subject matter is within that unit. Mm -hmm. What am I supposed to do? Read a book? Okay, so... What else? Yeah, it's a problem. Another thing that should that you should be using in your online courses is 
are rubrics for not for your major assignments, anything that's significant. If it's a product-oriented right. assignment. Right. And uh, uh, if... A clearly articulated, a checklist, this drives me crazy, a checklist is not a rubric. Right. A check, yeah, that's correct. A rubric specifies... Oh, thanks. <laughs> a rubric specifies what the conditions are for Do you have that in there? check do You have that in there? For check do But there's no qualitative differentiation. Right. For achieving certain levels of... Of, uh, of quality within certain categories of the assignment. Uh, if you have a really sophisticated course management system, that rubric is built right into the course management system. And you and, can implement it. And you can implement it. And as you put the each and every, each individual grade for each cell into the rubric, it will record as a final grade when you're finished uh, with the rubric, uh, uh, putting in all the uh, subgrades in there. And you can also put comments in for each cell. This is really an excellent thing to use because it saves you a lot of work and saves the students a lot of anxiety and lets the students know uh, exactly you do adore what is that, required. Those concepts that are integrated into some learning management systems. I do because it, they, it, it makes your life easier. It simplifies the life of the teacher, and my main purpose is <laughs> to simplify the life of teachers and rather than quality feedback to the <laughs> learner. <laughs> rather than making their lives more complicated, technology should make your life easier. It should not make your life more complicated. Where's you that soapbox? You, you should not have to. <laughs> it's true. You should not have to use technology because somebody thinks it's a good idea. Oh, doesn't that drive you crazy? And, and it creates why? A, but why? <laughs> it creates an awful lot of extra work for you. Can't explain why other than but it's going to be great for the student, uh, for the learner. Like, okay, that doesn't even make sense. Right. What does that even mean? So remember, design your course so that it makes life easier for you and makes life easier for your teacher, be systematic. As well as better for the learner. And yes, and you'll have a very enjoyable semester. For Technology and Education Today, I'm Richard Smith. And I'm Caroline Crawford. Bye!